nice and a pleasant good morning to you. Thank you for joining us here at St. Christopher for our midweek devotion. Accompanying us today is Mr. Demario Roach on the organ and members of the All Saints Choir. <laughs> Christ or Passover has been sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Father, we come together in the name of your Son Jesus Christ, our Redeemer to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and the saving power through your spirit. May we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his love and mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, Oh, 
chapter of John's account of the gospel beginning at verse 1. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will bear even more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branch branches are picked up thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord.
speak to you now in the name of God who is Father, God who is Son, and God who is Holy Spirit. Have you ever wondered why words like awesome and awful have completely different meanings? Awesome means excellent, awful means really bad, yet both words are formed or derived from the root awe. In Old English, awe meant fear, terror, or dread. From its use in reference to God, the word came to mean reverential or respectful fear. But in mid-1700s, awe came to mean solemn or reverential wonder, tinged with fear, inspired by the sublime in nature, such as thunder or a storm at sea. Now originally, awful and awesome were synonymous. But by the early 19th century, awful absorbed the negative aspects of the emotion and the word was used to mean frightful or exceedingly bad. The earliest citation in the Oxford Dictionary for awesome meaning, marvelous, great, stunning, or even mind-boggling is from the official Peppy Handbook, 1990. Language, an or conversion or attempts to convert one language to another has often cause problems. Unless a generation is using the original meaning or context of a word or even an event, to seek to convert it is to move further and further away from the truth. There's a phrase in today's gospel that got me wondering about its original meaning. And that phrase is cut off. Verse 2. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. First, I went back to the trusty King James Virgin and noticed that the phrase was take away. Then I went to the Greek where the original meaning really is to lift up. Ero, elevate, to take off. Not take off, but to take off. Then it began to make a little more sense because I then went to find out grapes and how grapes are grown. A grapevine on the ground cannot bear anything. It must have something to cling to. It must be lifted up to bear. Many believers cannot bear fruit because we are on the ground. We are weighed down by sin, by disappointment, by worry, right? by grief. The enemy has us weighed down, bogged down. Israel's biggest enemy was the Philistines. The word Philistine means to wallow in the dust. But our Savior Jesus Christ came to redeem us, to lift us up, to position us in such a way that we bear much fruit. As long as we are in the dust, we will not bear fruit. The nature of the branch is to cling to something. When this is missing, when this ability is denied, we die. Grapevines are planted at the base of a trellis. That is what they will eventually cling to. When planted in a row, as the vines grow, the branches cling to each other and intertwine. When they are aligned, they will support each other. That is important for the church. We, we are the branches interdependent. That is the nature of the church. And if we are to be his representatives here on earth, Christians, then we must follow his examples. Jesus' ministry was really about lifting up. From his birth, the shepherds were the first to see him. Shepherds were outcasts, but they got the news of the Savior first not the high priests, the outcasts were lifted up. The men he chose to be around him and indeed to spread the gospel. They were not from the upper strata of society, a normal working class gang that he lifted up. Remember the woman caught in adultery. The community was ready to stone her to death while the man she was caught with could walk freely. Who among you without sin cast the first stone? She was lifted up. I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. 
it is not in the nature of our Savior to destroy. He stated clearly that he did not come to judge. John 12, verse 47. If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. For I did not come to judge the world but to save the world. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Why? A few years ago, I planted an almond tree. And it took off like Jack's beanstalk. Then my neighbor, an old wise lady, Miss Clark, was passing and we had usual conversation. And she calmly said, you know, Davison, if you prune the tree, it will give you more than leaves to rake up. I pruned the tree. It got thicker and I can now sit in the shade. Pruning gives volume. It gives more branches. And this brings me to another word that caught my attention. Beer. Some translations say produce. But if Jesus is the vine and we are the branches, the branches do not produce or bear fruit as our culture understands. We bear fruit as to hold. We bear the fruit. We hold the fruit because it is God working in and through us that fruit is produced. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose and they will each be rewarded according to their labor. God is the producer. All that we have is from God and we should never get in the habit of boasting about what we did. Rather, it should be Look at what the Lord has done. And this calls for patience. I used to think I was the most patient person or one of the most patient persons in the world. I actually thought that. Then the Lord led me to be a priest and he blessed me with two beautiful children. I'm now learning patience. If you have spent any prolonged period of time with me, you would know that I love mangoes. As a child, I ate what I considered at the time to be the sweetest mango in the world. And I decided that it was too sweet to just be enjoyed once. So I planted the seed and wow, in a few months up pops this little tree. And I watered and I watered and I watered in my elation. I tilled the soil. I even went to my great aunt in St. Lucie and brought sheep manure from her sheep pen. And I was tending to this mango tree. And the mango tree got taller and taller and taller. Three years, it bore nothing. Four years, it bore nothing. Five years, nothing. Six years, still nothing. Seven years, not a thing. And then one Sunday, at Sunday school, we had the parable of the fig tree. You remember the parable of the fig tree? Luke 13. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard. And he went, and look, went to look for fruit. But he found none. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard. For three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and have found nothing. Cut it down. Why should it use up soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year. And I will dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If it does not, I will cut it down. Well, we are now at eight years with this mango tree. And it has borne nothing. So I decided one more year and I will cut it down. So I chopped it down. And threw it out of the garden to dry so that it could be burnt. And this is what really hurt my heart. While the branches are withering, blossoms shoot out. And as if to rub it in my face, those blossoms mature into little bitty mangoes that even turned yellow. The same mangoes I was longing for, those sweet mangoes. Then everything just withered and died. We need patience. I've since planted another mango tree actually this year 
it has produced fruit and I'm watching it carefully and being patient we need to wait on the Lord as much as we believe we are in control we are not remember our Savior said he did not come to kill and to destroy but to bring life and to bring it abundantly that abundant life is achieved when we stay connected to God connected in thought in our words and our deeds in reading his word in prayer when we stay be assured in God's time we will bear fruit we will have that fruit to hold to show when we prove our love our faithfulness he will prune us and work through us that our lives offer more and more good fruit all to his honor and to his glory it is never about us but it is about us putting ourselves at God's disposal to be used in ways many of us cannot even imagine God is not looking to cut us down. He's looking to raise us up. And when we understand the awesome love of God, our natural response is to share that love and to support each other. And to be beautifully entwined with each other in such a way that we all begin to grow. We all go up to that next level. So beautifully entwined that no one is allowed to fall, but to grow stronger, to be thicker in his love. Our job is not to cut down and to cut off anybody, but to live in such a way that those who see us, sees God. Shining through us as we live a life of love. So that those who see us, will glorify God, not us, and follow. Our job is to bear fruit, to put ourselves at the disposal of God so that he can use us, so that he can work through us and persons can see what our God can do. It is not about cutting off. It is really about raising up. Let us continue to lift each other up. Amen. Let us pray. Let us together offer the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God Almighty and Everlasting Father, 
You have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity, and in all we do direct us to the fulfillment of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rest of the past night and the gift of this new day, with all its opportunities of pleasing you. Grant that we may so pass its hours in perfect freedom of your service, that at evening we may again give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord and Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.